Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. So from your practice, is it always when it's connected to, to, to actual death and loss? Or is it more just open? Because, yeah, so in that case, like when you're explaining, oh, you know, when, when you're dealing with somebody who just dies and that trauma, yeah, I could see how that could totally shake you. Whereas in my case, because he survived, yeah. it was an empowering moment. Okay. Well, that's interesting, right? Because there's a concept of post-traumatic growth. So most people are resilient. And some people, for maybe the way their body, their nervous system is wired, the way their fight-or-flight system is wired, they might develop PTSD. But not everyone's going to develop that. Not everyone's going to get depressed or anxious. Most people don't. We grieve, right, which is a little bit different. It's a natural process. It's part of life, unfortunately. It's, I'm very curious about your post-traumatic growth experience. If you feel like sharing, I know it might be personal. <laughs> it's shooting it raw. It's all personal. It's all good. Okay. So basically the thesis of the, of the podcast is if life really is mm -hmm. a gift, how do we make every second count? Right. Yeah. So when my friend almost died, that kind of facing your mortality and your friend's mortality, because that trauma was definitely about witnessing his his pain and his you know the suffering. Because when he was unconscious, he was unconscious, and when he was conscious, he he was conscious for maybe yeah. about an hour or two, and then the the rescue team got to us. And then I don't know if they sedated him or not, but um, they, go, they took him away in, a, in a, an ambulance. And then at the hospital, they probably intubated him. I, like, I'm not really sure of how much he remembers. But that trauma was really uh, most acutely felt by, I think, by the people around him, right? Because we saw him. So that's one... Sure. It yeah, would be yeah. so scary. Yeah. And... A few months after that, uh, I was standing at a street corner going to make him dinner, actually. And then a car came up the sidewalk and ran over me. And I had, like, brain injury. I was comatose. Uh, I don't know if you learned oh. about um, Glasgow Coma Scales, but I basically I had a very, very severe uh, brain injury. And so then I was, you know, uh, paralyzed and all this stuff. So then amazingly incredibly i completely recovered but what i remember was the trauma of seeing my friend on the the intubate you know the you know on the, the intubated on the ventilator on the in the hospital just a few months earlier so i kind of know what it must have been like for everybody around me to see me so close to death really yeah yeah, yeah. so that that yeah, well, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> yes. Somebody who's listening to this, who is who recognizes themselves. Yes. What what can we give them as a means to to cope? What can we give a listener who is willing to open that door and look at the sort of the fear and the anxiety back there who recognizes it who recognizes them, themselves in what we're saying like what can we say or what can mm -hmm. you say to them to help to help them find some level of, of stability yeah so there's this concept of psychological flexibility and it's linked to resilience there's this gray area people do not like to be in, right? They like clear answers. They like planning. They like to say, okay, I know what's happening. And when we're in this gray area, we get scared because we can't see it. But there's a lot of things we have to remember we can't see. Like you didn't know your friend was going to fall. You didn't know you are going to get hit by a car. So waiting for that other shoe to drop is kind of a waste of time, a waste of energy. Because we can't, we literally can't predict it. So in this gray area, it's a good time to analyze 
your feelings, right? Because if we avoid our feelings, it's going to chase us. If we push it down, it's going to get bigger. If we connect with our body, right? If we pay attention to what's happening in our body and we be curious, okay, why is my heart beating so fast? Am I excited? Am I scared? Okay, let's look at my fear bucket. What's in there? For every single fear, can I come up with a plan? If I can't, how do I get comfortable with this gray area? How do I get comfortable with the unknown? What do I need? What do I need to say to myself? What do I need from others? What do I need to say to others? Yeah. This is a really unexpected uh, depth or territory that we've that we've gone into. And I, I also love that as we're talking about this, there's a photo of of it's it's a room in red light taken at the eye level, say of somebody standing looking through the, the ropes of a boxing ring and in it are you in red or are you in blue? Good question. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I'm in red. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you're the one who's jabbing somebody right in the kisser, right in the face. Uh, and so... Yeah, yeah, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> you're competitive. I love it. <laughs> um, awesome. So, yeah, get into your body. We're, we're talking about resilience. We're talking about strength. We're talking about somehow con- is it is it a question of containing our fears is it a question of coming to terms with them like how do we uplift somebody listening now who may who may be seeking help and and some kind of stability i can s- summarize it very clearly it's the same thing i feel like i say every day you matter and you count nice And I say that because when people have trauma, when people have been abused, you know, they start to believe they're worthless. And that's not the case. You matter and you count. Mm -hmm. And when you start to be a bully to yourself, you got to use a nurturing voice, a self-compassionate voice. What would you say to your friend in the same situation? Someone you love in the same situation. You wouldn't bully them. You'd be like, it's okay. We're going to get through this. Right. And that voice is healing, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Monica, how do I say your last name? Borshell. Yes. Uh huh. Borshell. Uh huh. Thank you so much. You're you're awesome. And thank you too. You are too. I'm so glad you did this. Yeah, for it, sure. It's so amazing that we have so much in common. Yeah. Well, look. Hopefully, one day we'll be in the ring together, and you can uh, you can uh, mm. flatten me out. Looking forward to it. Or I can run away from you. <laughs> One of the two. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Oh, thank you so much, Monica. Have a great evening. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.